There, there was once a king who announced that he would award a prize to the artist who would paint the best painting depicting peace. So many great painters sent their works of art to the king to have him judge. One of the pictures, one of the paintings among the various masterpieces was of a calm lake perfectly mirroring peacefully towering snow-capped mountains. And overhead was, was a blue sky with fluffy clouds. The picture was perfect. Most of the people who viewed all the pictures of peace from various artists thought that, that it was the best among all of them. But when the king announced the winner, everyone was shocked. The, the picture which won the prize had a mountain also, but it was rugged and bare. The sky looked angry. There was lightning. This didn't look peaceful at all. It looked like the artist had mistakenly submitted his painting depicting a storm rather than peace. But if anyone looked really closely at the painting, he could see a tiny bush growing in the cracks of the rock of the mountain. And in the bush, a mother bird had built a nest. And in the midst of the rush of angry weather, the bird sat on her nest in peace. Peace does not mean to be in a place where there's no noise or no trouble. I mean, peace means to be in the midst of all the chaos and still be calm in the heart. The real peace is a state of mind, not a state of our surroundings. The mother bird at peace, despite her chaotic surroundings and despite all that was going on in the painting, truly was the best representation of peace. I came across that illustration and I, I wanted to use it as an introduction to my thoughts for today. And basically I, I titled this from pieces to peace. One right now could easily say that the world that we live in is in pieces. It's fragmented, it's confused, it's disconnected, it's in conflict. We're surrounded by turmoil. The storms of life are raging around us and maybe even raging inside of us. And really all we want, all we desire, all we need is some peace. There are a lot of people right now who are working on, on trying to restore some semblance of peace to our lives, to find a cure, to flatten the curve, to, to restore order, to return to a normal, peaceful existence. But try as they might, and, and I'm not here to criticize. In fact, I applaud the efforts that they're doing. But it doesn't take many minutes watching news reports or reading postings on the internet to know that in spite of their efforts to reestablish peace, there's still conflict. There's still confusion. There's still dissension. There's still disagreement. The truth of the matter is that the true reality is that only God can take pieces and make peace. I want you to listen to this reading from Job chapter 38. God is actually talking to Job and he's talking to Job about all that God had created and how he went about creating the universe, if you will. And he's questioning Job because Job had questioned God. And so God wanted to make a point to Job. So I want to read verses 4 through 14 of Job 38. And just, just listen, if you will, to God talking about the various things that he had created. <clears throat> Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no further, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place, that it might take the earth by the edges and, and shake the wicked out of it? 
The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. If you keep reading through even chapter 39 of Job and beyond, God continues to speak to Job about all that he did when he created the earth, all that went into the creation process and, and how God systematically and detailed everything that, that he created. And if you remember back to Genesis, to the story of the creation, and, and you begin reading in, in Genesis 1, starting in verse 2, it says that the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So what did God do with this lack of order and these pieces that existed, this, this big glob of, of matter, if you will? Well, through his creation, he brought about order. He formulated a plan. He executed the plan. He reworked all of that glob of, of matter. He collected all the various pieces, and God brought about peace, his creation. But God didn't stop with creation, though. Unfortunately, once again, the world was in pieces, and that was at the time of Noah in Genesis chapter 8. Sin and unrighteousness were evident everywhere to the point that only eight righteous souls could be found anywhere. So God took those eight souls along with animals and he put them in the ark and he hit the refresh button by flooding the earth. And he reestablished order once again and, and he brought peace back to what had become an unruly and fragmented existence. Much later, God once again saw the earth with no hope of ever finding peace or, or returning to a godly existence. People were misguided. They were corrupted by those with selfish ambitions and personal agendas. And they were struggling to establish a true existence and a true relationship with God. So once again, God took the pieces and he brought about peace by sending his son Jesus to earth. And when Jesus came to earth, his mission was to not only to restore some order, but to return man to a relationship with God and, and to enable us, enable us to experience the peace found in only having Jesus Christ as our Savior and God as our Heavenly Father. Jesus would also follow God's example um, in creating peace out of pieces. When he, when he talked to the Samaritan woman, some of you may recall that story in John chapter 4. It may be also referred to as the woman at the well. And if you talk about a life that was in pieces, this woman's life was in pieces. Listen to just a few verses to begin with in John chapter 4, beginning with verse 15. And the woman here and Jesus are having a conversation. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Imagine this woman five husbands and, and a live-in, well, that's a life that was in pieces. But if we read on, I think we'll find that Jesus was able to take her life that was in pieces and give her some peace. Let's look down to verse 28 again of John chapter 4. Then having her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. And then if you go down a little further to verse 39, it says, Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Not only 
did Jesus restore peace to this woman's life, but, but also he brought peace to many in that town. And I think Jesus would again restore peace when we look at John chapter 8, the first 11 verses. Here it is, is where Jesus is, is there and, and the teachers of the law and the Pharisees bring this woman who they've caught in adultery. They bring him to Jesus and, and really they're looking to try to trap Jesus. Jesus is kneeling on the ground when they bring him in. And here was this woman whose life was in pieces, truly. She was, she was humiliated and sinful and about to be stoned to death. Then Jesus said to, his, uh, to her accusers, he said, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And then when Jesus stood up and saw that her accusers was gone, were gone, he asked her this. He said, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Once again, a life that had been in pieces was now at peace. And most of you probably know about Peter. Peter was another whose life was in pieces. If you'll remember his denial of Jesus, not once, but three times. Imagine his guilt, his shame and humiliation. Or imagine Peter carrying that around. I mean, he had boldly kind of disagreed with Jesus when Jesus told Peter what Peter would do. And then he did it. And we have nothing to indicate in the scriptures that Peter ever got a chance to speak to Jesus from the time of his denial to Jesus' crucifixion. So to carry that with you would, would definitely put your life in pieces. However, in John chapter 21, Jesus, after his resurrection, after he was brought back to life, he restored peace to Peter by commissioning him to continue Jesus' ministry and to take care of his sheep. Let's also not forget all the lives that were fragmented by sickness and by disease and by loss, that Jesus was able to bring peace through his healing power and his love and his compassion during his ministry on earth. Thankfully, you and I have a heavenly father who, who has the ability, who has the power to restore order to a fragmented world. And we have his son Jesus who embraced his father's quality of love and compassion and forgiveness and looked for ways to remove the pieces and restore peace. And he did that not only while he was on earth, but, but even now to those of us who embrace him as Lord and Savior, we can find peace. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave you and I? Well, I think two things come to mind. First, I think we need to acknowledge and embrace the peace that can only be found in a loving father and a sacrificial savior. We can come to a deeper appreciation and an awareness of that peace through our love and through our faith and our trust and our obedience and our prayer. Paul wrote to the Christians in Philippi about the benefits we have from God through Christ Jesus. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, just read or listen to this reading with me. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. We don't need to know how it all works. We just need to believe that it works. Second, I think just as God and Jesus were, were about networking and, and reworking and, and working together, if you will, on the chaos found in the world and in people's lives, by, by removing pieces and, and bringing about peace, we can serve as their instruments as well. We can help others find a life of peace rather than continue 
with a life in pieces. Jesus would teach in his Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God, in Matthew 5, verse 9. You see, if, if one of God's qualities is that of a maker of peace, then shouldn't that be one of ours as well? I mean, maybe not to the extent of, of taming roaring seas and, and placing stars in the sky, but in bringing peace to those lives that may not have it, that may be in pieces. I think we can do that. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, we read that God created man in his image. So as a peacemaker, you and I can try to resemble our Heavenly Father by helping the broken, by, by reassuring the afraid, and by, by doing what we can to replace the pieces in people's lives with peace. We listen, we pray, we help, we support, we call, we give away food and clothing, we show people that they're loved and they're valued. Not just by us, but by a God who cares for them and a savior who died for them. We embrace being created in the image of God and serving as makers of peace when we reach out and try to help others whose lives are in pieces find peace. If you think back in our own lifetime, when, when parts of the world have encountered natural disasters like earthquakes and floods and, and tornadoes and fires, what, what did we do? We donated, we volunteered, and, and we helped however we could to bring some level of peace and healing to those who were experiencing life in pieces. So what should we do now? When we see people hurting as a result of, of illness and disease, as, as a result of death and loss, as a result of no job, as a result of financial difficulties and maybe hunger. Well, one thing we could do is ignore those lives that may be in pieces in the hope that, well, someone else will take care of it or, or maybe the problem will just go away. Or instead, we can give our best effort to help restore peace to those people's lives. One example comes to mind is how the, the Helping Hands Pantry continues to serve people in this community. Uh, the pantry staff and the volunteers are helping to bring some peace to those who are in need by, by modifying the method of, of providing food to those in need and, and in a way that, that helps bring some peace, but also in a way that helps keep them safe. James would write about peacemakers in James chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And James wrote this, he said, But wisdom that comes down from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Be assured that God can take a world that is in pieces and he can bring about peace. He's done that before. And, and while we do not have the power or the wisdom that God possesses, we still have opportunity to help restore some semblance of peace one person at a time. And we can begin with the peace that each of us can embrace as children of God. In closing, I'd like to ask you in just a minute to join me in prayer. And then following that prayer, I want to read the lyrics to the song, God Bless You, Go With God, and let you hear it sung by the York College Concert Choir, again under the direction of Dr. Clark Rausch. I know this song is a favorite of Ed Long's, and so I chose it for this week in part because of that, but also because it's a message of hope and peace that we can find in God and in his son, Jesus. Would you pray with me at this time, please? Heavenly Father, you are the ultimate peacemaker. Your power has had the ability to change not only lives, but change this world that we live in. Right now, we ask you and, and we ask your son to bring peace to each of us. 
to bring peace in our lives and, and help us to reach out and find that peace by, by trusting in you. We also ask that through your power, you could bring peace once again to this world by helping those who are working so hard at finding a cure to lead them to that cure, by helping all of us who are trying to do our part to continue to help us do our part. We just pray that you be with those who are hurting, that you be those who have suffered loss, and that if we have the opportunity that you give us to touch those lives, that you'll help us in some way to bring some peace to those who are hurting and to those whose lives are in pieces. I thank you for Jesus, and I just pray this prayer through him. Amen. The words to God bless you, go with God, are these. This is my daily prayer. God bless you, go with God. Hold fast his mighty hand throughout the day. His grace your heart sustain. His power relieve your pain. Your prayer be not in vain as you travel his way. In spite of all the lies that some may hurl, Christ is the only hope of all the world. God bless you, go with God. Through all eternity, my prayer will always be, may you go with God. In spite of all the lies that some may hurl, Christ is the only hope of all the world. God bless you, go with God. Through all eternity, my prayer will always be, may you go with God. May you go with God. And now, the York College Concert Choir, God bless you, go with God. <laughs>